every single Pokemon versus 1 billion lions. A debate that's been around for like years at this point. In the same vein as 1 billion lions versus the sun, and the lions stand just as much of a chance against the furry little guys as they do against the burning celestial body, which is none at all. 1 billion lions versus Pokemon is not close and here's why. This was originally supposed to be a horror channel, by the way. One billion lions might sound like a staggering amount of big feline friends, and it certainly is, the population of North and South America combined, but, you know, lions. Putting them up against one of each Pokemon would give them a huge number advantage. Since there's 1,025 Pokemon in total, the lions would outnumber them like a million to one. On top of that, lions are pack hunters, so they'd easily be able to utilize their numbers, since in the wild they chase down prey together, jump a single stronger animal, or coordinate ambushes. Although I'm not too sure how ambushy 1 billion of anything can be. A female lion can range from 7 to 9 feet long and can be as heavy as 400 pounds. While males get slightly bigger, peaking around 10 feet long and 550 pounds. Or just under two of my ex-girlfriend. But all that weight does not slow them down. Topping out at around 50 miles an hour. Or 80.5 kilometers an hour for you losers overseas. They're also incredibly strong. Capable of climbing trees despite how heavy they are. And carry or drag around their prey which they take down by using their long claws to grab hold and large teeth to subdue and suffocate them. Their canines can reach over three inches long. That's huge, right? They're also about as tough as it gets. Since weakness means death in the animal kingdom, they have no choice but to shrug off attacks and debilitating injuries, whether it's wounds from other animals or broken angles from their prey. So we got the lion stats out of the way. One billion kings of the jungle. Now forget everything I just said because literally none of it matters. There are over 1,000 Pokemon, ranging from a punchable bite-sized mouse thing to a 6-foot lizard dragon with an axe on its face. And here lies the problem, why no amount of lions would ever stand a chance. Legendary Pokemon. Countless of these guys just solo. No questions, like Yveltal, the Poke manifestation of death itself who can just spread its wings and steal the life force of everything on the battlefield. And even if it were to die to something like a stray ice beam to the back of the head, its death would drain all living things of their life and just go to sleep or how Groudon and Kyogre are able to terraform the entire planet. Oh, and not to mention Pokemon God Arceus, who created the entire universe including other powerful legendaries like Dialga and Palkia, who act as gods of time and space respectively. And I could go on and on and on about how these godlike beings can kill a bunch of oversized house cats, but for the sake of the argument, and to get the video over the 8 minute mark for that sweet sweet ad revenue, let's subtract the legendaries. Although not every single one is capable of universe or planet destroying feats, they are, or at least lore wise, more powerful than most non-legendary Pokemon. Like Articuno creating blizzards just by flying, or Mewtwo's ability to crush skyscrapers with a thought. We can also remove mythicals from the equation, since even though they typically aren't as strong, they're still able to pull off some pretty nutty feats like Entei, causing volcanoes to erupt when it barks, or Mew going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the aforementioned Mewtwo. And no Ultra Beasts. I guess they're aliens or something? I don't know man, Sun and Moon were the last games I played, and I can't say I paid much attention. I just get the impression they're pretty strong. So now with 86 of the most powerful Pokemon out of the way, we are left with little over 900 Pokemon. And to make it even more interesting, let's leave out all non-final form Pokemon. So no pre-evolutions like Mudkip, Haunter, or even Pokemon's own poster boy Pikachu. But I will consider alternate forms like Alolan Raichu or Zapdos. Since along with their new looks, these Pokemon act differently and sport new typings that their counterparts don't have. So they vary enough to warrant their own placements here. This leaves us with 625 Pokemon. Now with these new restrictions, we can give the Lions a fighting chance having the starting amount and further increasing the lion to Pokemon ratio. So, do the lions stand a chance now? No. Sure, they don't get blinked out of existence in this new scenario, just your average Pokemon can threaten the lives of thousands in its vicinity just by going along its merry way. Makes you wonder how people in the Pokemon universe can even coexist with these monsters. A Pidgeot, the fully evolved version of the most common bird in the Kanto region, can fly at Mach 2, that is two times the speed of sound or over 30 times the speed a lion can run. But who cares about movement speed? How is a lion even going to react to supersonic speeds? Speaking of flying Pokemon, how do lions even catch them? Like yeah, these guys have a pretty impressive vertical, but how do they hit a Pokemon like Talonflame or Flygon just beaming them with range attacks from hundreds of feet in the air? They can't. Easy win condition number one. I didn't mention how lions are pretty tough, but they're still killed by wildebeests and poachers all the time. So the unfortunate fact of the matter is, they are not surviving an attack from these superpowered creatures. One solid flamethrower from a Charizard is toasting hundreds of lions. A flamethrower is one of the most tame moves I could mention. There's almost a thousand different moves that vary in power and destructive capabilities just as much as the Pokemon themselves do. 
thunderbolts and hyper beams. Draco Meteor literally summons meteors from the sky to rain on their opponents. A few of these are wiping all lions off the face of the earth no issue. Or the move Magnitude which acts like an earthquake ranging from magnitude 4 to magnitude 10. The Earth isn't even capable of creating a magnitude 10 earthquake. The largest ever recorded was a 9.5. And keep in mind that these guys tango with each other all the time, whether it be territorial disputes, Pokemon preying on each other, or the most obvious, Pokemon battles between trainers. They're having these intense anime fight scene battles every day. Even if you want to say that the survivability of most of these attacks are for gameplay, which it probably is to a certain extent, the lion still can't bypass the difference in durability if we go off Pokédex entries. Pokémon like Nidoking are said to have rock-hard hides and horns that can pierce diamonds. Even the less popular Pokémon that you wouldn't immediately expect to be problematic, like Durant, would likely be completely immune to anything the lions could throw at it, since their bodies are covered in steel. A lion's bite force clocks in at around 4,450 newtons or 1,000 psi, which is impressive, but it takes about 40,000 psi to break through steel. It'd take the strength of 40 lions to begin to even hurt a Durant. I use Durant just to put it in perspective, but there's countless of other Pokemon like Aggron who are much bigger and much more powerful who are literally made out of steel. I'm even tempted to say that there's some non-legendary Pokemon who can solo 1 billion lions like Gardevoir who can straight up create black holes. I haven't even mentioned status moves like Thunder Wave or Toxic which can paralyze or poison waves of lions. Or Yawn putting dozens of lions straight to sleep making them easy pickings for other Pokemon. There's just too many options for the Pokemon side. Whether it's speed blitzing with their hypersonic movement speed or attacks, attacking from afar with special moves, or simply nuking the battlefield with their plethora of attacks. The only counter argument I could think of obviously has to do with the difference in numbers, and the Pokemon could just get tired out before killing all 1 billion lions. This at best would end in a draw since, like I said, the lions couldn't reach the flying Pokemon and they simply couldn't harm some of the tankier Pokemon. But let's entertain this idea and say the Pokemon do start slowly whittling away, losing some of the weak ones while the rest get tired and can no longer attack. There's still a ton of Pokemon who act as healers, I know a bunch of healing moves that can restore others to full health. These probably won't be on the front lines and sit back as medics. Although they are occasionally portrayed as animalistic, like they literally hunt each other, they are much more sentient than a real life animal, understanding human speech and even working real jobs without any issue. Some are flat out stated to be as smart or even smarter than your average human. So they'd likely devise some sort of plan to efficiently take all the lions out. And if all else fails, nuke them. I've also seen this argument made, but in the context of the games, which kind of throws the whole lore side out the window, so no Pokédex entries and whatnot, strictly giving each Pokémon four moves, each move having a certain amount of uses in the old-fashioned 1v1 style. So sure, I guess this way the Pokémon will simply run out of moves and could no longer harm the lions. And also, if you give each lion their own set of moves, like Bite and Scratch, then sure, I guess this is the one scenario I'd give it to the lions. But I don't know, that's kind of lame. Otherwise, Pokemon absolutely stomp, lion stand, no chance, and a video. Huge thanks to Something in the World for today's thumbnail. Their Twitter is down in the description, as per usual. I plan on streaming Zucosis on the day that drops, whenever that is, so look out for that. And next video might be on Maxine, but who knows. Subscribe to see when that's out, and I'll see you guys later.